volunteer is of God until you have Christ living in you. Amen? Amen. That's a hard thing to say, but you see, I say hard things. Christ said hard things. Who likes this? Uh, I don't hear the mega pastors preaching this. Do you hear them? He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Look at verse 39. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. What's the uh, philosophy of America today? Assert yourself. Love yourself. Be yourself. Be in contact with the inner God within you. The inner God within you. Be a God. You were meant to do great things. Really? Well, how many people are doing great things for God? For God? Great things for whom? For whom? You mean it's a great thing when you can have your private jet? That's a great thing. Well, of course it's a great thing. But are you using it for the glory of God or the glory of self? Are, are you with me? He who finds his life will lose it. But he who will lose his life for my sake will find it. Blessed is the man and blessed is the woman who makes a commitment to Christ and say, Lord, I will go the distance wherever you want me to go. No matter what comes against me. All the waters, all the floods, all the torrents, all the rains, all the persecution, all the pressure, all the discomfort, all the humiliation. Lord, I will take up my cross and follow you. Nobody loves me anymore. That's okay. Praise God. I am so happy nobody loves me anymore because I am marching forward. Oh, well, I need, you know, I need everybody to like me. I need a, my Facebook page to have one million likes. <laughs> No, no, no. We in competition these days. How many likes you have? Followers. Like I care. Followers. I send my message out, and every day I get a, two or three more likes, and every day I get two or three disconnects. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. You think I'm getting my reward from Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg isn't going to reward me. Okay. No Jesus will. Yeshua will. Amen. Amen. Well, this is this is serious stuff. Would you say so? Verse 39, yeah, I already read that. So, so we are talking serious stuff. You know, the, this, this condemned prisoner, I, I left it apart. I should, this was even worse. The condemned Roman prisoner would walk to the site of the crucifixion, but typically he would be naked, which makes it even more embarrassing and humiliating. Can you imagine the public steering and the public mockery? The mockery of all these people gathered along the pathway looking at this condemned criminal and as far as they know he is a condemned murderer he's a criminal whatever he is remember that jesus did that for you and for me yes. amen are you willing to take up that cross and follow after the one who died for you and the one who will reward you is jesus first in your life is yeshua first when you woke up this morning did you say thank you lord yeshua for another day you just say, Lord, I'm going to church today. I say go to church. We don't go to church. We are the church. I'm going to fellowship, okay? Lord, I want to go and fellowship today. I want to go sing some praises to you. Lord, I want to hear the word of God expounded to me. Rather than, well, it's a beautiful day. Let's see, the sun is out. This is a great day to shop. You don't need any more clothes. Am I right? Yes. There is nobody in this room who needs another stitch of clothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, some of you love me, and some of you say, Pastor, you're nothing in my personal business. Yes, I am, that's my right. <laughs> but, oh, there's a big sale. Macy's is having, sorry, Macy's, we gotta like you either. Okay, but you know, whoever, they're having a big sale, 50% off, and if you have a card, your card, you get an additional 25%. Woo! Man, I'm gonna just go spend $2,000. How many of you don't raise your hands, don't embarrass anybody? How many of you here have clothes in your closet you have yet, yet to wear? Or you have worn once? And you can't wear it again because you don't want anybody to see you wear that the second time. Your pride. Oh boy, you ladies, I know they're gonna hit me now. Okay, sorry. Says I got my little spanky here. Folks, am I making sense? All of you know, it's the truth. 
He had tons of shoes, you know, where he went once, he went to, you, he bought this pair of shoes for a wedding, and that was the only wedding he ever went to. <laughs> so, you have that pair of shoes there for the next wedding, will come in the next hundred years. But you need more shoes? Are we getting a church? Yes. Is Christ really number one in your life? Are you willing to face the mockery and contempt? Are you willing to face the disrespect? of the world. Are you willing to be in a group of people where everybody is saying yes to the LGBT and you say, sorry, I disagree. How dare you disagree? Well, I happen to follow Christ. And God says it is sin. Oh. Can you take that? Oh, your pride is so great. I can't, I can't, I can't be different. They will look down on me. It is better for the world to look down upon you. Mm -hmm. Because when the world looks down upon you, God will look at you amen. and bring you higher. Amen. amen. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. If you want to please the world, go right ahead, my friends. Please the world as much as you want. But the more you please the world, the less you will please in God. Amen. And if you keep pleasing the world, sooner or later you will lose your connection with God. Yes. You might end up coming ambassador. Yeah, part of those sins. Let's go to Matthew. What was that? Matthew 10? Yes. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Watch. Uh, primarily using scriptures from Christ himself for a reason because the subject is about living for Yeshua only. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then if not for this, I want to go to one example from Paul, the apostle. Here it is. In, in a way, it's a repetition, but I want it to be repeated. If Christ said it twice, why can't I say it twice? How about that, right? Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, as Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus said to his disciples, Are you a disciple? Yes. yes. Are you a disciple? Yes. yes. All right, good. So then he's speaking to you also. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I just covered that, but I'm doing it again because Christ said it again. Why would Christ say that two or three or four times? Because the hardest thing to do, my friends, is to deny yourself and to live for somebody else. In this case, the somebody else is Christ. Amen? Oh, we are too busy to deny ourselves, people, because, you know, we've got to get that, that, that car that's $100,000 and everybody, when you buy the car, you ever see all the advertised things sometimes with cars and clothing? Be the envy of all the others in the office. What does that mean? When you walk into that office with your new coat, all heads will turn to look at you. Mm. How about if I am the kind of person I want no head to turn to look at me? Mm. Then I should wear a piece of cloth, you know, just throw it over myself. The very method of advertising plays into our prideful nature. Do you observe that? Yes. And because Christians are so undiscerning, we don't even realize that. Uh, you know, young way, uh, there's a watch called some kind of some Pataki watch. Philippi, I don't know what it is, but that watch is worth thousands upon thousands of dollars. Why would anybody wear that? Because when I wear that, it flashes to see what I'm wearing. I'm, I'm, I'm arrived. I'm somebody. I'll tell you something. I'm somebody. The day I accepted Christ, I who was nobody became somebody. Amen. 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 Praise God. How about that? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. You are somebody in Christ. Let me give you another word. If you don't have Christ, you're nobody. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone is asked to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. In other words, be willing to pay the price. Be willing to suffer. Be willing to be the scorn, the object of scorn in your family or in your neighborhood or in the, or in the community in which you live or where you work. Hold up your face and say, I am proud to be a Christian. And if I must boast, I will boast in the cross of Christ. Amen. If I must boast. Mm -hmm. How much, what percentage is Christ living in you, church? It's a powerful story, powerful message. Powerful, powerful message. Let's continue, verse 25. For whoever desires to save his life, it's a repeat, but you'll see one will back there. 
For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, next verse. Watch the, watch the connection. Watch the connection. Verse 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And I remember growing up, that was one of the most famous scriptures that preachers would preach. Those were the days. Those were the days when preachers preached the Bible. Remember that, people? Oh, those of you, they preached the Bible. Not this psychological garbage that we hear today. They preached the Holy Scriptures. Maybe they didn't understand all of the things, but it wasn't necessary. They preached the Bible. What profit is it to a man? You gave the whole world. So you made your million. You made your mark. Wow. And when you die, who receives it? The government will take what percent? 35%? I don't know what percent. Everybody takes a cut from it. You have worked all your life to produce your little empire. And now your empire is about to be dissolved. Is it wrong to work? No, you should work. And you should buy clothing. And you should buy food. And if you need a car, you should buy a car. All of those things. But don't be obsessed with any of that. Because none of that counts. What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world? and loses his own soul. Uh, I think there was a lot lotto ticket. The last lotto was worth a billion dollars and nobody won it or there was no, no winning ticket, I think. And so it now went up to 1.6 billion. So I plan to spend 1 billion in tickets tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, being funny. You know, people, there are, there are millions of people in America, or maybe in the world, who say, oh, if I could win 1 billion dollars. Oh, I have a word for you. I guarantee you that none of you will win it. <laughs> so I'm sorry for the bad news. It's good news actually. Because if you want a billion dollars, you will never attend church again. Mm -hmm. You will never need Christ. Right. You will have everything you want. And you will look down on people like me and the rest of us. Am I making sense to you? I'm not saying you, actually, you. I'm speaking generally, of course. Okay. Yeah, so what will a man give in exchange for his own soul? What, what, what? Beloved, do we understand? How many of you have reached the age, feel like, where you begin to think about dying death? Huh. You know when you cross a certain age? When you're 20 and 30 and 40, the thought of death hardly comes across your mind. Is that correct? Am I, am, I, am, I, am I speaking the truth here, right? I mean, I know I was, I was once 20 and 30 and 40. It was a long time ago. But you know when you cross 50, you hit your 60, and suddenly when you hit your 70 and 80. I talked to my mother yesterday. She's 85. And you know when I said, so how are you doing? My mother, well, you know, I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't go here and I can't go there. I said, well, that's good. You have a house to live in. Praise the Lord. <laughs> It's like you're waiting for that number to be called, right? Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. I, I hate to break it like that, but that's a fact. That's you will die. Yeah. 70, 80, 60, whatever, you will die. I don't know when you will. I don't know when I will, but I know I will. What am I carrying? What does the Lord have on record against my name? If you are in the book of life, praise God. But against your name in the book of life, what now? are the things you've accomplished for him. Did you put him first? Did you put him first? Amen? Amen. See, we are, we have, we have reached a situation where people are ashamed of Christ. Yes, sure. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. I wanted, and this is one I must go to. Mark chapter 8, because Mark brings out a point here that Matthew does not record. I'm sure about that. Yes. I only want to go to verse 38. Mark 8, verse 38. Social media, Mark 8, verse 38. That's what I want, because this brings up another dimension that was not brought up by Matthew. Mark 8, verse 38. Here we go. Mark 8, verse 38. I read, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, hmm, whoever is ashamed of me in this and my words. So, are we ashamed of Christ and his words? No. Can we, in the midst of our family gathering or some other gathering, 
Do we have the, the, the strength and the courage to say, but my Bible says. <laughs> you, you funny people, you believe in the Bible. <laughs> Nobody believes in the Bible anymore. I do. You believe in the words of Jesus? <laughs> Nobody I do. You see, in a sinful and adulterous generation, people no longer want to believe God's word. All right? So that's why he says, if you're ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous generation, okay, let me continue here. Whoever is ashamed of me in this and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Christ is coming back, church. People out there, Christ is coming back. And every man shall have to give an account. I don't care who you are, who you were, or who you yet will be, but everybody will have to give an account. Are you ashamed of Christ? Are you ashamed of the words of Christ? Can you really stand up in the public where discussion is being held? Or maybe on your Facebook page for that matter. Are you afraid, for example, that you might lose a friend or two on your Facebook page if you stand up for truth? If you're afraid of that, then you're ashamed of Christ. Those friends you're afraid to lose are not your friends. They are your enemies. Whose approval do I want? Christ or my so-called friends? Who is standing at the who will be the judge at the judgment day? My friends or Christ? Who is giving me the rewards at judgment day? My friends or Christ? Christ. You're getting it? And that's why we need not to be ashamed of him. You know, I marvel, I think I mentioned to you, I listened to a program recently from Open Doors or Voice of the Martyrs or what? I think it was Open Doors and there was this Christian pastor who was speaking from Pakistan, I think it was. And he was saying, we don't ask you to pray for us that we escape the persecution. We ask that you pray for us to endure the persecution and to be a witness to our persecutors. They are willing to go into the firing line and die for Christ. And here in America, Christians want to live their best life now. Lord, help us. Bring us back to the cross. Bring us back to the cross. Bring us back to the cross. Paul said, and I'll go to one more scripture here. Paul said, this is amazing what Paul said. These words in Philippians chapter 3. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, using the example of Paul. What a great example, what a great servant of God. Paul lived for one purpose only. You remember Paul's life? Before he was converted, he was a killer. <laughs> He was a very devout Jew who had a mission, destroy Christians, until Christ almost destroyed him. Christ brought him miraculously to the cross and took himself, and then gave him a commission to preach. Finally, my brethren, so we go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, I'll go through this very quickly. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in who? The Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you is safe. He's writing a very powerful letter. He's going to warn them about danger and tell them something very important. Next verse. Beware of dogs. He's not speaking of the dogs in the street. He's using the term in the way the Jews use it. People of a certain caliber were called dogs. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. That's those who, who um, believe that you must be circumcised to be saved. We do not need to circumcise the flesh to be saved, okay? We need to circumcise the heart. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ. Rejoice in whom? Christ. Rejoice in whom? Christ. We don't rejoice in... Here we go. I don't rejoice in the Republican Party. I don't rejoice in the Democratic Party. I don't rejoice in anything but Christ. Amen? That's where Christian comes. That's your point of maturity. That now I rejoice. If it's of Christ, I rejoice in it. If it's not of Christ, I can't rejoice in it. Only in Christ and anything of Christ can I rejoice in. Amen? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah. For we are the circumcision of the heart, who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Wow. From, G from, from Paul... Paul, who, who boasted in the flesh, 
Now what does he say? The exact opposite. He says, I've seen the light. I've seen the light. I've seen the light. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Yeshua. Amen. Next verse. He says, um, I might, verse 4, although I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm also. You want to boast in the flesh? In your glory? In your great things? Your achievements? Whatever you have done in your life? You're building a little castle. You know that song says what again? I'm all the, let me get to that song in this story. Where, where, where is it? Here it is. All an empty world can sell is empty dreams. I got lost in the lie that it was up to me to make a name the world remembers. Saul of Tarsus was lost in that lie until he met Christ. He was making a name to remember. He had letters from the Sanhedrin so that he could go into the towns and the cities, identify the Christians and drag them back to justice and be part of murdering them. He was making a name for himself. Until the Lord said, Paul, Saul, that life is over. Now you'll worship me. And you, Saul, will now become the hunted. And they will persecute you. And Saul, Paul, one day you will die for me. He says, I'm not going to boast. But he says, I, you want me to boast? He's making a point. To, to make a point, sometimes you have to pretend to boast to make a point, right? He says, they want to boast? I can boast. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, considering the law a Pharisee. I mean, he's saying, you can't get any better than that. I'm top there. It's like, I'm, I'm the PhD level again. You can't go beyond that. Wow. But all of that, watch Let's go to the next verse. This is amazing. Absolutely incredible. Um, concerning zeal, Paul says, I was so zealous for, for, for my religion. Zealous for his religion, mm -hmm. for Christ. Mm -hmm. Persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. Sa Saulos of Tarsus was blameless. In obedience to the law, the Tanakh. Now what? But what things were gained to me? All the glory and all the power and all the points and all the respect that I had with that, these I have counted loss for Christ. Wow. Get it? He says, look, all of that, I was number one, I was up here. I was everything that you wanted. I was the, the exemplar. I was the epitome of it. I don't want it anymore. Because I found something better. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Somebody say praise the Lord. I have found something better. And that something is Yeshua. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Next verse 8. I love this verse 8. The best part. Yet indeed... I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge the excellence of the knowledge of Christ not the knowledge of yoga not the knowledge of all this New Age nonsense that's bombarding the church, infiltrating the church, and corrupting the church. No, no, no. We will never allow any New Age nonsense in this little congregation. Not while I'm alive. Never. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Never. Not on my watch. I would stand resolutely and uncompromisingly on the Holy Bible. Amen. And the greatest preachers out there could be making the biggest millions out there and they're embracing all that New Age nonsense. I will not do it. I must be faithful to my God. Amen. 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 For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as a rubbish. Actually, the Greek word is stronger than rubbish. The Greek word is dumb, D-U-N-G. Filth. Excrement. 
This is a nicer way of saying it. He's saying all of that stuff that people boast in, that's human excrement. Wow. And by comparison, no, don't, don't misunderstand, okay? He's not saying eh. it is it is literal. By comparison. Think about it. By comparison, everything is rubbish to Christ. Everything. That's why Paul is my hero in terms of a, of a, of a man, apart from Christ, of course, who is my God, but Paul is my hero. It's not rubbish. So what? So I can have that? I don't want that. I want Christ. Can we say I want Christ? I want Christ. Can we say it louder? I want Christ. I didn't hear you. I want Christ. I want more of Christ. I want more. I want even more of Christ. I want more of Christ. Today and tomorrow and forever. Today and tomorrow and forever. I want more of Christ. Can Christ depend on you, church? Can Christ really depend on you? Can Christ look down and say right now of you by name? I know she will never betray me. And no matter what happens, he will not compromise my word. I'm sure Paul, Christ could say that of all the apostles. Amen? Amen. He says, I count them rubbish. Why? That I may gain Christ. I count them as rubbish that I may what gain? So in other words, he isn't losing anything. He seems to be losing something. But what he's losing is getting a lot more. It's like, let me put a simple example. It's like you have a, a small car that hardly gets you anywhere. And God says, I want you to give, give, give up that car to the neighbor. No, I, I can't do that. God says, just give it up, trust me. And you give it up, and the next day, guess what? He gives you a brand new big car. Man, Which, hard. get it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little child, you know, a little child who, you know, or a little boy, he holds on to every toy he gets. And we buy it, of course, we give it to him, and if we touch it without his permission, <laughs> And then suddenly I say, but, but, but I want to give you something big, bigger and better, right? Are you with me? All of us parents know that, we have lived through that, as, as children and as parents. So, so sometimes we are holding on to the, 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 the rubbish. Yeah. And God says, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Release the rubbish. I want to give you something better. Go ahead. Amen. But that takes a lot of faith. Yeah. It takes a lot of faith, dearly beloved. Brothers and sisters, it takes an immense amount of faith. People talk about faith. <laughs> faith is easy to talk about. It's the hardest thing to live by. Amen. When a man has fifty million dollars in the bank, he shouldn't be talking about faith. <laughs> do you get that point? What faith? How did you get that fifty million dollars? Well, first, what are you doing with it? But when you're struggling and you don't know what will happen next month, that's living by faith. Amen. 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 I'm not talking about, talking about maxing out your credit card so the rest of your life you're in debt. That's not faith. That is folly. <laughs> Sorry. No offense to anybody. But I know. Speaking the truth is a hard thing, right? Uh, Amen. So Paul says that, um, and be, verse 9, And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. For what purpose? Verse 10. We're about to close, we're about to close. Verse 10, I want you to see this. That I may know him. What was Paul's obsession, if I may use the word, that I may know him, Christ, and the power of his resurrection, that resurrected, glorified Christ, that's what I want to be. That's my goal, to be like the glorified, resurrected Christ, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Most Bibles don't have this verse. I'm joking. People don't like this part, this word, and the fellowship of his sufferings. You mean, you mean there are sufferings? Yes. Being conformed to his death. You mean I gotta kill some things? Yes. But I like the way I am, but God doesn't like you the way you are. I gotta give this up? Yes. But this is the way I was born. Well, God. 
gave you a new birth to remake you. Are we listening? Don't hold on to the piece of rubbish you have. Let it go. Let it go. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, it was Paul's passion to be resurrected. To be resurrected. What is our passion? What is the world's passion? Resurrection? That's the least of the thoughts. Yeah. Who thinks about resurrection? <laughs> this world thinks about money, power, status. You know, this mayor and this governor, and I'm voting for this governor and this mayor, and, and, this, and, and all the illegals coming in, and we got to take care of them, and we got to take care of all the animals in the world, and this one, is, this one has an animal shelter. How about, you know, I'm glad you have an animal shelter. How about a human shelter? We get all messed up with foolish things, and we forget the real thing. I May mean, I remind all of you that dogs and cats wouldn't have made an image and likeness of them. Human beings are. Some of us, we are so obsessed with nonsense that we give animals. In America, our government and those who run the government and others are more concerned about saving dogs and cats and bears and lions than saving babies. We have legally murdered 60 million babies, legally, legally by man's law. The stench in God's nostril is unbearable. We have ripped apart and shredded to pieces little tiny arms and legs inside a woman's womb. And nobody cares. Politicians don't care. It's about money. Planned parenthood is planned murderhood. A bunch of criminals, murderers, ungodly human beings who need to be in jail. And they're Christians who support planned parenthood. Are we listening? The darkness in America is not yet finished. It will get darker. Will you be a light in the darkness? Or will you be ashamed of Christ? Will you embrace the darkness and say, hey, it's okay, everything's fine? Let me close and tell you this, church. If you're living for Christ only, Christ will begin to rule your marriage. Every decision you make will be based on Christ. If you're living for Christ only, everything you do in a job will be based on Christ. Should I do this or not do this? Everywhere you go, should I go there or not go there? Will Christ be glorified? Should I buy this or not buy this? Will Christ be glorified? Should I send my child to this school or that school? If you're living with Christ, you'll be sure that your decision, Christ is glorified. Or you have the option of saying, well, the whole world is doing it. The whole world is headed for the lake of fire. You are called to be a light in the darkness. Yes. Don't be part of the problem. Be the solution. Be the hope. Be the inspiration to somebody who is looking at your life and saying, well, I admire her strength. I want to be strong like that, rather than, well, she's a Christian, she goes to church, you look at where she lives, she talks like a, a real criminal, oh hey, she or he, I'm just saying, that's dear God, boy, I don't want religion, I don't want you to have religion, nor does God want to give you religion, God wants to give you Christ, Amen. live for Christ, let your focus, Paul said in Hebrews, let your focus be on Christ, right? Keep your eyes where? Your eyes and your heart, your mind focus on Christ. Yeah. Dearly beloved, if you make a decision today that from this day forward, every minute of your life that you're waking, you're going to make sure, be sure, that everything you do is based on your love for Christ. Your life will be radically transformed. I cannot guarantee your life will be free from pain. No, you will have more pain. You will have more persecution. You will have more opposition. But you will have more glory. Amen. You will have more beauty. You will have more power. And one day, we will be glorified like He is.
will be glorified like he is and reign with him forever and ever. May God give you his grace and his mercy and the faith to make Christ, to make Christ, to let Christ be your number one reason for everything you see, everything you say, everything you think, and everything you do. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you, everyone.